Hello and welcome to the Dallas Soccer Show. I'm Dustin Nation and I'm here with Jonathan Ross. How's it going, Jonathan? It's going well. Thanks, Dustin. And this is another episode of the uh, lineup prediction show that we've kind of been doing before every weekend game. Uh, this weekend we are playing Minnesota in Minnesota. Both Minnesota and FC Dallas are both coming off big highs. FC Dallas over, with its Independence Day victory over DC United. And Minnesota with its Open Cup victory over dismantling of New Mexico United. So it should be a good game. Both teams, I think, will be up to it, up for it. And it will be interesting to see um, how FC Dallas rolls out, given that, uh, as far as player news goes, um, Johnny Nelson is still out and is expected to be out for a while. But that's really the only, I guess, injury, unless somebody picks up a knock tomorrow after they get to Minnesota, um, that we know about. And it'll be interesting in that this will be Reggie Cannon's first game back from international duty. So will he travel? Will he um, start? Will he get uh, come in as a sub? And then... It will also be the first game in which Edwin Giassi will be available for selection after his uh, loan uh, went through uh, when the transfer window opens. So, with all that being said, uh, let's let's go ahead and start with the, Jonathan's predictions for the Minnesota game in Minnesota. Jonathan, wh- who do you think will be our back line in Minnesota? So, so Dustin, I'm still thinking that we're going to do a uh, four-man backline, so I don't see uh, a shifting formation still still going to stay with a 4-3-3. Um, and actually, I think the backline is probably the hardest part of the predictions this week. Uh, and a lot of that is because, um, like you said, Canada is back from international duty, uh, and Brisson has been playing really well in that right-back spot. Uh, in fact, I, I would say that uh, I've been more impressed with the way he's played in, as a right back um, th- than in his center back play. I know he's naturally a center back. Um, he's right footed. He, you know, he's he, he's been getting forward a lot. Even if you look, go back and look at the stats from uh, Atlanta United, his positioning was actually even further forward than uh, than Hollingshead was, um, and he had better defensive stats. So I mean, he he played really well. So the question really to me on the back line is. Do you change things up, right? So do you do you keep Brisson on that right back spot, let Kanan kind of ease back into the team, or do you or, or do you take Kanan, you put him back in kind of you know his spot that he's earned before that? Uh, and for for me, I'm going to go with Kanan. So I think Kanan comes back uh, for international duty. He basically has a week between games, pretty much, right? From from having the, uh, the the match against Mexico in the Gold Cup to the match on Saturday night against Minnesota. So I'm going to go with Reggie Kanan as the as the right back. Uh, and then the question really is, does Brisson still start, right? And so uh, it's a tough one, right? Because the uh, you, you've got a couple of options, right? If you're going to start Brisson, then you got to shift everything left. I think like we've seen before, put Ziegler as the left back and you sit Ryan. Um, or you could swap out either Ziegler or Hedges and give them a day off uh, at center back. So it's the, the, this is, like I said, it's probably the, the toughest piece of of the, the lineup prediction. For me, I think Brisson is going to sit despite his play. Um, so I'm gonna stick with, with Ziegler and Hedges. Um, the, I think there are center, bar, center back pair um, under most circumstances. I think they're, that they're proven, they work well together. Um, Ziegler, although he doesn't get forward like Brisson does, had some fantastic uh, uh, passes from the from the back last week. Um, and you know, it's, it's part, of, part of his trademark of the way he plays. So, I'm going to go with those two at center back, and I'm going to stick with um, good old Ryan Holland's head as a, as a left back. So I know you've got, you know, some big predictions or something, you get, you know, some statement you made to Armand about, uh, you know, about, about, about Brisson, but what are you, what are you thinking, Dustin? Yeah. Um, so I, I am going to disagree with, with, with you on Reggie Cannon. I think the question I asked uh, Armand was, does, does, Reggie Cannon walk back into the side and just cement his spot given the play of Brisson. And I, I think the answer is yes, but I think the answer is also not tonight. Or sorry, not on uh, against Minnesota. I think given that in the past he's 
had some so i think we talked about that as well is that when the last men's national team he went to he lost nine pounds while he was there and um i i think that i think that he'll get the night off on saturday and i think they'll ease him back in with some play against sevilla next wednesday so i'm gonna say that brisson uh, th- that our back line is actually unchanged this week from what it was on Independence Day against DC United. All right. So, all right. Let's move up the pitch, shall we? Yes. Um, so, the, so, so first of all, I'll eat crow a little bit from last week. Uh, I, I think it was uh, when I, I, I tweet out my lineup predictions even when we don't have the, the show. Um, and I was thinking that uh, um, Surreal was going to get the start over Sylvania with uh, with Acosta back. Uh, and I know that uh, Armand mentioned on the podcast that you know he really believed that uh, Sylvania was going to be the one getting the, getting the start. And I think uh, I saw Buzz say something similar on some of his third degree posts. So I was wrong. I'll eat crow. I'll t- I'll take that. Um, I, I, I don't I don't see a change. And in fact. Uh, with with the center three, I mean, it was uh, looking at the way that they played against Atlanta United. It was you started to see a little bit of what they were calling the triple pivot, you know, earlier on in the season, where a lot of the guys were starting to come forward, right? Um, so, so you'd have basically people rotating between a, a, a defensive back and playing a little bit more further forward, right? So Paxton was still the the the, the most forward or most offensive player. Uh, what, what surprised me a little bit was not the the three players necessarily, right? Um, was that uh, Acosta was really probably the most defensive of those three, uh, which I you know I kind of expected uh, that might be Cervania or like I said before, like it might have been Edwin in that in that spot. So um, I. I I don't think you changed that. Uh, I think those three working together were worked out worked out fantastic. Um, so I'm going to go with that same uh, same midfield, the triple pivot from uh, from the last game. I'm right there with you. I think why change what works? Those guys, um, let's give them a run out and, again and kind of get used to each other, develop that chemistry, and and become you know a unit, if you will, that's not just mm-hmm. constantly pulling people out of it and plugging pieces in let's get some some cohesiveness going i say it stays unchanged as well all right, all right so um so we no no differences there yep what will be interesting will be the forward line as well because we now have giassi available for the left wing yep. spot which has kind of been that that position that is is like uh, we'll call it the the one spot that's been open and up for grabs more than any other spot on the team. So, who do you think starts? Um, well, I mean, Mar- Mikey Barrios. We're, right. we're gonna like Mikey is Mikey. locked yep. in, right? Okay. So the other two spots. What? Who do you got? It's interesting. So the so I think at striker um it's a little bit more of a question now right because i do think um like you guys mentioned on the on the podcast earlier this week i think baji is going to be freed up more to go back to a traditional striker role where i think he's better suited as a number nine the question is is he the starting number nine are you going to stick with jesus um the I'm I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna stick with Jesus there. I get uh, thought, thought it was interesting, and I don't know. What, you guys talked a little bit about it on the podcast, but um, you know, I always get every time I, I I send out a lineup prediction, I always get people asking, "Hey, when's the Cobra gonna start? Right? When's the Cobra gonna start?" And uh, yeah, I, I think it I think we're all happen. kind of we're all <laughs> kind of kind of agreeing that the um, you know now especially with um, if, if Baji takes more of that center forward role, right, striker role, then um, it, then the Cobra is pretty far down uh, the pecking list and probably isn't going to get a start. Um, so I would say from a lineup perspective, I'm going to stick with Jesus. Potentially Baji's going to come off uh, off the bench um, and, and hopefully we'll start to see a good competition at striker between those two. Um, and then at left wing, the I'm going to go with, with Santi. Um, Santi had, a, he had probably his best game in a long time. Um, what was interesting in, the, in his first 10 minutes, uh, he had you know he had a goal right. Um, he uh, all, you know he, he had a, a, a great pass over to Paxton who you know challenged the keeper. I think that was like around the nine 10 minute mark. Um, and to me, when you watch his goal celebration, if you actually watch it, 
right after he celebrates, he almost looks relieved. It was like the weight of, the weight's off his shoulders of not scoring since October. Man, I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with with Santi, um, which of course you know. I'll, I'll I'll throw it back to you for your for your lineup, but then also you know it's kind of a bonus point. You know when you think Giassi gets to see the field. Okay, well, I predict that it will it will be uh, against Minnesota United, but I don't think he starts. I think Santi starts on the left wing, um, and Santi for all the good things that he's done against DC United um, and in his uh, game prior he still has yet to make it 90 minutes and I think it, if you have Giassi in the in the 18 then it will be a natural swap there and you don't lose any of the dynamis den, I can never pronounce that word dynamicism coining Co- words here folks yes dynamis dyna, dynam, any of that creativeness and and speed going forward. Uh, in fact, do have you seen any of the the, the videos that FC Dallas has put out of F, of Giassi at practice? I've not seen the practice videos now. Yeah, he does this move where uh, he it's kind of like the 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 Ronaldo chop, where he kind of chips it back to himself, completely fakes out the defender and the goalie, and then just pops it in the net. So. Um, very encouraging from that five second clip, but um, yeah. So I think, I think he's he was brought in to be a starter. I think he will be very shortly, uh, just not against Minnesota. And then as far as the center forward goes, I think that's Bodgie's. I think Baji, uh gets the the nod. Dang. Yeah, I think he's he's kind of he's got more confidence right now. He's he's been a little bit more productive recently more recently than uh, Jesus. Um, so that's my prediction. So time will tell. Um, this is a YouTube video. It is also going to be available on our podcast. So any place that you can leave us comments, tell us what you think that your lineup prediction will be. We, we were on Twitter as at Dallas soccer show with no E and at Jonathan Roz on Twitter as well for Jonathan. So so let us know what you think the the lineup will be. Tell us where we're wrong and where we're idiots. Uh, I know I I tend to be one. So um, we look forward to, to seeing those. And thank you for watching or listening. Cheers, everybody.